Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Christian House of Praise TNT Tuesday night teaching is live. Amen. Praise God. February the 2nd, 2021. 2021. Yes, we made it. Yes. Amen. Yes. As you come in, and <laughs> those of you that uh, are getting prepared, we pray that you get your Bibles out, your B-I-B-L-E's, yes. and you get you some paper. You might want to take some notes. I know I do. And uh, you might want to get you a pen. Amen. As we get ready to jump into this Tuesday night teaching. We're still in our series, The Secrets to Christian Living. The Secrets to Christian Living. And tonight's topic is loving and knowing. Loving and knowing God. Amen. Loving and knowing God. So as you get prepared tonight, yes. you know what direction we're going in. We're going to allow Lady Whitley to uh, read a few scriptures, and then we will jump right in. Uh, just a few notes. This coming Tuesday, today is Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, uh, February the 9th, is our next food distribution with mm -hmm. Feed America. And we, if you're in this local area, we pray yes. that you come out, support us. We need volunteers. We can, the more hands, the merrier. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for all of you that have supported that and will be uh, in attendance with us. And if you can't be here in attendance with us, please be in prayer with us as we attempt to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready for the word tonight? I know I am. This is what we live by. Amen. Amen. This is what we're going to need to survive. So Lady Willie is going to open us up with a few scriptures. We're talking tonight, still in our series, Secrets to Christian Living. To Christian. And we're speaking tonight from the topic, Loving and Knowing God. Amen. And of course, our primary scriptures are coming from John chapter 3, verse 16, which is very familiar to many of us. And then John chapter 15, 9 through 10. Also, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11, verse 16, and verse 19. Now, what I'm going to do, um, because of course, we are going to expound on the scriptures as we uh, go through tonight's study. Amen. So I will be reading in your hearing John chapter 3 verse 16 as well as John chapter 15 verses 9 and 10. And so the word of God reads John chapter 3 verse 16. It says for God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then if you turn your attention to John chapter 15, verses 9 through 10, the scripture reads, and I'm reading King James Version on tonight. It says, as the Father had loved me, mm. so have I loved you. Come on. Continue ye in my love. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments yes. and abide in his love. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Thank Father you, God, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, as we enter into your study tonight, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray now that you would clear our minds and hearts, Father yes, God. God. Give us clarity of mind and thought, Father God, as the Spirit, which is your Spirit, Father, teacher of the church, Father, would speak Jesus. unto our hearts, Father God, Thank and God. give us what it is that you would have for your people, Father. Yes, Father, we pray now, Father, that your word would go forth with power, conviction, and authority, yes, and your Lord. people will receive from you. Yes, we ask these blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 We're talking tonight about loving and knowing God. Yes. Loving, loving and, and knowing, knowing God. God. Mm. They go together. Loving and knowing, and God. knowing God. Because to know God is to love God. Yes. Oh, this is good. And many of us say that we love God, but we have a problem with the people here 
on this earth. Yes. Those that we see every day, those that we come in count, count in contact with, those that we encounter every day. Yes. But we cannot say that we love him, mm-hmm. but hate them. My God. <laughs> come on now. We got, we, we somewhere where we're, 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 our, our Christian living is off. My God. And we're talking to you tonight about the secrets to Christian living. I can't say that I love God, but I hate you. My Lord. See, the Bible says if we do say that, and if that's how we think, Mm -hmm. then we are liars. That's right. My God. (laughs) My God. No, 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 no. That's what he said. Now, don't, 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 don't put it on me. I'm telling you, that's Mm -hmm. what the father says. We can't say that we love him and we know him. My Mm -hmm. God. That's it. We know him. Yeah, yeah, I know him. I know him. (laughs) I know the Lord. But I don't like you. My I got Lord. a problem with you. My God. No. God said, if you say you love me, then you have to love those that I created. Yes. You have to love your brothers, your sisters, even the ones that's hard to love. That's right. Ooh, glory to that's God. That's right. My God. How many of you know that we're hard to love mm. for him? Amen. Amen. See, Amen. all Amen. children belong to God. The Bible says in, in uh, Psalms the 24th chapter, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. <laughs> yeah, the earth is the mm-hmm. Lord's. Yeah, everything belongs to him, and he has a problem loving us. Now, now, why would you say that? Because many of us are hard to love. Come on. He said here, Lady Willie just read it to us here in John, the 15th chapter. He says, uh, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. He said, as I have loved as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Yeah. Mm, mm. He said, and continue you in my love. Yeah. He said, if you keep my commandments, mm-hmm. you shall abide where? In, in my, my love. love. Even as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. See, if you want to stay in the love of God, you can't allow people to take you out of the love of God. That's right. You can't let attitudes, or you can't let uh, you can't let persuasions, you can't let racism, you can't allow hatred to pull you out of the love of God. The love of God. Yeah, don't let nobody pull you out of the love of God. <laughs> yeah, don't let nobody pull you out of loving them and make you hate them. My God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't let nobody pull you there. And the secret to Christian living, we taught you this in our first installment, is that we abide. abide. That we abide. That yes. we stay connected. connected. That's the main source of our survival, yes. is that we stay connected. It's our lifeline. Is that we stay connected. When we're not connected to God, mm. guess what? When you're disconnected from God, you're living... <laughs> you're living, hear me now, you're living on borrowed time. My God. <laughs> My God. It's just a matter of time. My Anybody God. that when they unplug you from, from that respirator, it's just mm. a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. You're living on borrowed time. So the secret to Christian living is abiding. You better stay connected. <laughs> you better stay connected. And the way that we stay connected, the way that we abide in him, the scripture is telling us tonight that we got to keep his commandments. You know, I've been teaching you this uh, as this month has begun and even at the end of last Mm -hmm. month that we don't want to be like those in Matthew 7 that stand before him and Mm. he says to them, I knew you not. And you said, no, no, I was abiding. I was connected to you. I had the church down on 3rd Street. I was Mm. casting out demons. I was prophesying. I was speaking. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, all that's good. But depart from me, My. thy work of iniquity. Help, Lord. And what, what really is the sad commentary of that scripture there, Lady Whitley, is he's not talking to the unsaved. He's, he's speaking to, to the, the church. church. Glory yes, to sir. God. He's speaking to the church. Those of us that consider ourselves Christians. Amen. You know, love costs. Mm. Love costs. And it's expensive. A real, true, authentic love costs you and I something. It costs God something. It costs God everything. The Bible tells us that he loved the world so much that he gave. He freely gave his only begotten son so that you and I 
would be able to have the opportunity to come into a love relationship and fellowship My with God. God through his son, Jesus. Yes. So that you and I could live and to live again. And so God is so faithful. You know, uh, when Pastor Whitley and I got married, and I've, I've told this story before, it cost Pastor and I $25. <laughs> My God. It cost us $25 My God. at the Justice of the Peace. And here we are 30 plus years later, still in love one, with one another, still loving one another, still getting to know one another. And that's what it's all about. And sometimes it costs other people thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. But what will it cost you? What will it cost you on tonight? What did it cost Jesus? It cost him his very life. And so Jesus is asking us to submit and to give our lives to him. Why? Because he knows what we need to be doing with the life that he's given us. He created us. Amen. He created us. And so and he's given us all the instructions on how to go about living this life. That we can be, bring about fruit. We talked about that. Um, living um, fruit bearing. You know. That's also a part of us living this Christian life. We are to bear fruit. And not only just bear fruit. But bear much fruit for the kingdom. And part of that is through the foundation of love. Love it is the foundation for all manifestation of God. Amen. So when we're talking about the fruit of the spirit. All of those byproducts of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, those things hinge on our love. Amen. We can't have peace, the peace of God, if we don't love like God. Oh, we that's can't good. have um, the goodness that God desires if we don't love the way God wants us to love. We can't have that perseverance or be able to persevere the way God desires if we don't love the way God loves. And so... Love is the foundation for all manifestation for God. And in John 3 and 16, it sets the pattern for true love, Pastor. It tells us exactly, gives us the picture of what true love is. True love gives. Mm. True love sacrifices. Even for those that are not lovable. Amen. When we were in our sin, we weren't lovable. Mm -mm. But despite all of that, he still loved us. It's despite ourselves. The Bible says while we were yet in, in sin, sin, God sent. Come on. <laughs> yeah, some people say, do God bless mess? But I mm. want you to know the scripture says when we were yet still in sin, God sent. Mm -hmm. It tells me that we, we, we weren't getting it right. We weren't fixing it. We weren't, we weren't in the pr process of becoming what he called us to be. Uh, God still sent yes, because he, he loved, he sent yes. his son uh, to, to save us. That's right. To save us. And that's, that's a key that you said it cost because it cost him his life. Yes. And another thing that I don't think that we realize, Lady Whitley, it's going to cost us our life. Our lives. It cost us our life. That's right. Uh, just like Jesus, he's our example. If he had to pay his life, come on somebody, if he had to give his life, what you think it's going to cost you? That's right. It's going to cost you your life. You know, for those of you that know, um, our eldest son, um, years ago, he became um, a renal failure patient. And when you're talking about loving someone unconditionally, I loved my son unconditionally that I gave my kidney to him so that he could continue to live. Amen. And that's that's when you love like that, like the love that God gave when he gave his son, Jesus Christ, and the love that I shared with my son by giving my kidney so that he could continue to live, praise God. That's a love that's not self-centered. God's love is not self-centered. And what his love does is his love reaches out and it draws in. Mm. God's love reaches out and then it draws in others and draws us in. It's the reason why the Bible says it's through loving kindness that I've drawn you. Yes. Uh, he gives us an example because when we were when we weren't saved, mm -hmm. uh, what pricked our hearts to to give our lives to God was his love, love. drawing us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we all need salvation. 
We all need salvation. Everyone needs salvation. That's the reason why his love for the world was so great that he gave his greatest gift. He gave the ultimate love that any one person could give. He gave his son, praise God. And so Jesus paid the ultimate price. He accepted our punishment. And he paid the price for your sins and my sins so that you and I would be offered new life. Mm. Jesus did that for you and I. So we don't have to go and recreate the wheel. This is a free, free gift. Freely given, freely we should receive. And so God is on tonight, even for that person that has not received that free gift of salvation. He's already given it. And this serves as a reminder as we talk about loving and knowing God, that we have the opportunity for those that have not received the free gift of salvation to openly open their hands and receive the gift. Mm. Because it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. You can't buy salvation. Jesus bought it with his blood. He bought it with his life. And he was the ultimate sacrifice. Praise God. So, you know, for those of us, we have unsaved loved ones and those that don't know him. You know, we have to live for those of us that are saved by showing the love of God. Then what we are doing is we're giving them an opportunity to choose to come in a love relationship with him. That's what this thing is all about. It's not about us getting what God has for us and me and my four and no more. Mm. This is about making sure that everyone has the same opportunity and be shown the same grace and receive the same grace that was bestowed upon you and I, that same love that you and I chose to receive. You know, we live our life in the fruit of love. We live our life in the fruit of love. And that's what God desires for us to share with other people, you know, is to share his love with one another. Amen. Amen. Yeah, We should be showing his love yes, to the sir. world. The world yes, should sir. see Christ through us. Yes. Uh, they can't see him. He's not here on earth mm -hmm. in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But we are his representatives. So yes, we, we should be showing the love of him so that when others see us, they mm -hmm. see him. That's right. You know, I wonder many days uh, what happened to the good old days. Hmm. I, remember, I remember the old people used to say that. Now we're we're moving into that age category. What happened? to the good old days. You know, when people loved and respected one another. Mm. Even when they didn't agree, they still respected and showed love for one another. Mm -hmm. What happened to mm -hmm. those days? Mm -hmm. We're living, we're now in the time. Yeah, God's urgency of now. We're now in the time that the Bible describes where men have become lovers of themselves. Of themselves. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Let me give you this scripture. I know I got to certify mm -hmm. that. Second Timothy, the third chapter, verses two through four. Second Timothy, the third chapter, verses two through four. This is Bible study. Let's, let's not forget we're in Bible study. That's why we got our pens and paper and all that. Amen. Yes. Second Timothy, the, uh, the third chapter, verses, uh, Two through four says, mm -hmm. for men shall be lovers of them own, of their own selves. My God. Covetous. <laughs> Covetous. You know what that word means? Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. My God. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. Oh, Truth bre uh, breakers. Mm -hmm. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce despisers of those that are good. My God. Traitors. Mm. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. My God. Now, don't that sound like the time, the now that we're in? What time is it now? Don't that sound like the now that we're in? Men have become lovers of themselves. The Bible went, on, went a little further and said there's another scripture that says we're living in a time where men will do what seem it to be right mm. unto them. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm, do, uh, you know, I'm doing me. I'm doing what seemed to be right for me. Mm -hmm. Not for nobody else. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking out for me. That, don't that sound like the world in which we're living in today? Where men have become lovers and women, people, period, have become lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't love the truth no more. People will fight you. you know, there's a saying, you know, uh, 
a lie goes around the world for the truth. Get up and put his shoes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People love a lie. Some people, you know, if you watch oh the news God. and things that are happening in the world today, people will people will ride a lie to the end. Mm. But you try to tell them the truth, and people don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. People have become lovers of themselves. They don't want to hear the truth. This is the time that we live in. And the reason why we live in this time, and people have become lovers of themselves, you cannot love God and his agenda properly Mm-hmm. When you are a lover of yourself. Of yourself. Uh, Lady Willie just told us earlier, it cost Jesus his life. Yes. Well, it's going to cost you your life. And if you love your life, the Bible says this, this is not me. If you love your life, you're going to lose it. <laughs> but if you lose it for his sake, then you shall find it. See, too many people are losing their life because they, they, they trying to fi- they're trying to find their life. Mm-hmm. They don't want to lose it for his sake. They don't want to lay their life down for him, but they want to do what feels right to them. But you know, Pastor, part of the reason is that they have lost their compassion. Mm. If you turn your attention to Matthew 9 and 36, because the world is looking for love. People are looking for love. But in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, it says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion Mm -hmm. on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Sounds like the world, you know, but the world is looking for love. And a lot of times when they come to the church or when they come um, face to face or in the presence of believers, you know, oftentimes, unfortunately, we find some of the hard hardest people, the most stubborn, mm. the most judgmental, the most condemnatory mm. people sometimes are so-called in the quote unquote church. Covetous, boasters, and we proud, wonder why disobedient. <laughs> people are drawn away from being a part of what the church. Bad representation. And so, but the Bible says that just like Jesus, we ought to be moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. And so, loving and knowing God means that we have to have likewise the same compassion that he had for us, for other people. Mm. You know, one of the things that we, the body of Christ, can and should be doing is loving like God loves. Love in, is compassion, and love it, compassion is an action word. Mm. Love is compassion in action. All right now. Hashtag that love is compassion in action. Come on, that's good right there. So, you know, and then when we go to Matthew 15, let's turn our attention to Matthew 15. Because when we're talking about the fact that love is compassion in action, well, let's read about what love is not. Mm. So in Matthew chapter 15, Mm -hmm. verse 7 through 9, Mm -hmm. and also earmark Isaiah 29 and 13. In these passages of scripture, in Matthew 15, 7 through 9, it says, Ye hypocrites, Mm -hmm. well did Isaiah prophesy, talking about Isaiah, Prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. Lip service. And honor me with their lips. Mm-hmm. But their heart is far from me. Mm-hmm. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm. So he's saying you claim to honor and to love God mm. while your heart is far from him and your worship means nothing. You're, oh you're, you're verbally saying that you love God, but your actions lack the love and compassion mm. you of lack God. Compassion. Therefore, your, your mm-hmm. love and your so-called worship means absolutely nothing. It is very important that we know God versus knowing about God. Mm. A lot of people know about God, but they truly do not know God. Religion without repentance. Religion and no relationship. Mm. And so there lies the difference. It's not enough to have um, religious acts. Come on. 
it's, it's not enough to say that you love God. God says it's not enough for you to say that you love me, but your actions and your attitudes are not sincere. Mm. And so God is saying that your words and your actions should not just be routine, My God. but they must be real. God wants us to be real. God knows when we when we have questions. God knows when we don't quite understand. God knows when we're hurt. God knows when, you know, we're trying to find our way. But the Bible tells us that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And so if we would continue to look to him, mm. to, to, to look, to find ourselves in the instruction of his word to be more like him is to to apply his word because application begets manifestation oh, and when we apply his word then we'll see it manifest in our lives so when we apply the compassion that Jesus has one for another then we will be able to see that same love that and compassion that Jesus had for us in action in our own uh, in our own lives. So we can't just claim to belong to God and then um just go through the motions of our emotions. And a lot of times that's what we a lot of people are doing in churchdom. They're going through the motions of their emotions. Mm. And that's not satisfactory with God. That's the reason why he was able to tell them. He called them, he called them hypocrites. My God. He called them hypocrites. And so if you love God and you want to be called God's people, you must be obedient mm -hmm. and worship him. The Bible says in spirit and in, and in truth. In other words, lovingly, honestly, and sincerely. Mm. Man, that's good. Lady Willis said, uh, "Routine mm -hmm. with that reality." That's right. Uh, and that resonates with me because, for the simple fact, the Scripture tells us that those that come to Him and call Him Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. uh, they had a routine. <laughs> They had a routine. They said, mm -hmm. Lord, Lord. They, they were the ones that went to church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that prophesied in his name. Yes. Those are the ones that had a routine, but they were not living in reality. Yes, oh, man, that's real good. They were but, living in carnality. Oh, what you say? It said in John, the 15th chapter, verse 7, it says, if you abide in me, mm -hmm. it's in red in my Bible, John 15, uh, verse 7. It says, if you abide in me, if you're connected to me. Uh-huh. And my word abide in you. Yes, sir. Ooh, man, this is a key verse yes, right sir. here, man. If y'all don't get this right here, he said, if you abide in me, mm -hmm. if I'm in the love of God, yes. if I'm connected to him, yes. and his word abide in you, uh -huh. he said, you shall ask what you will. See, this is the part we like, oh, I can ask what I want, and it should be done unto, unto you. you. There's some key words in there. You shall ask what you will, uh -huh. because your will... When mm -hmm. you're in the love of God, you abide in him and his word abides in you. Then what your will, what you will ask is what he will for you. Oh, come on. That's right. Come on. I'm not trying to confuse you here. What you will ask is what his will is for you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not a play on words. That's, and it shall be, it shall be done, done unto, unto you. you. Yeah, we teach here, Homo Legale, say what God says. See, if I'm asking anything, I'm asking it where? In his in will. will. Simply because I abide in him and his word. And many people don't even speak God language, but then trying to get something from him. Yeah, mm. you know, like the kid on the street. You can't just, any kid just can't walk up to you asking for something. Mm -hmm. But if you're that kid's parent, relative, or close one, then they can ask you for something and expect it from you. Mm -hmm. My God. He said, but if you abide in me, my word abide in you, like I abide in the Father. Yes. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Then you will have what, what it is that you ask. Mm -hmm. When we stay in the love of God, one of the things Lady Willie is explaining now, sometimes we have the question, though, how do I love those that's hard to love? My God. How do I love those that mistreat you? Mm -hmm. and the Bible says it like this. It says, but I say unto you, I'm in Matthew, the fifth, fifth chapter, 44 verse. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Hold up now. 
Hold up now. <laughs> I'm having a hard enough time loving these ones that, 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 that are close to me. Mm-hmm. Now you telling me, because this is how love surpasses the carnality that we were just talking about. This is how love goes beyond just saying, I'm in church. Mm-hmm. He said, I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them which curse you. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Hold up now. Hold mm-hmm. up now. Do good to them that ha- do good to them that hate me. Pray for them which despitefully use you mm-hmm. and persecute you. See, we living in a world now. It's all about me and my clan. I'm in this group. I'm in this clique. I'm a polit. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm mm-hmm. a this. I'm black. You white. You green. I'm yellow. We we all in our groups, and I I tend to love those that are in my group. Mm. And many times, what we won't even do, we love will correct you. Mm. Yes, he will. <laughs> Come on. It's because you in my group. Yes. If you wrong, what love will do, love will correct you. Mm? Whether you want to accept it or not. And what love does it, it's in a spirit of love. Mm-hmm. It, ain't a, it ain't a harsh correction. It ain't a hateful correction. It ain't I want to abru- abuse you correction. It's a love correction. And what love mm-hmm. does when it corrects you, it sees you going wrong. It corrects you so that you can align yourself back up right. That's right. This is what God wants us to do as Christians. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the secrets to Christian living, loving and knowing God. He mm-hmm. said, how can you say that you know me? Mm-hmm. How can you say you know me when you won't even tell those that you say you love them when they doing wrong? You know, some people, they, mm. they'll love you straight to hell. My God. They will love you straight to hell. My God. And some of us, what we have to do when it's hard to love those, those that are hard to love, what you still have to do is show the love of God. Mm-hmm. And God even gives us the prescription for it. And he says, once you've gone the fullest extent that you can go, mm-hmm. he says, at that point right there, you have to love them from a distance. My oh, my God. Come on. You, how, where are you getting that from? He says, shake it off. <laughs> you have to shake it off because what I don't want to do, I can't be loving you. You hard to love. Next thing you know, we're in the middle of the street fighting. Mm. Because I tried to tell you something to bring you back into alignment and you didn't want to receive it. Many people won't receive everything from you that you try to give them in love, mm-hmm. in love. Everybody won't receive it. Some people think you're being harsh. And back in the days, you know, even the preachers, them, they, they were harsh. And some people say, I, those were the good days. Those were the days that we needed. That was for that time. That was for that time. But many people now, I told you on Sunday, I can say something and people be mad with me. But all, if you're giving somebody the love of God, you have to give them the word of God. Which is the truth. Not your opinion or not how you see the matter. Yes, sir. Because you do have an opinion. You do have a way that you see it. But I would rather give you the word so that you would have to, you would have to uh, compete or fight with it than have to fight with me. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why we say what God says and we give people what God says instead of our opinion on everything. How I did it, how I, ra- how I loved my wife, how I raised my children. That may not work for you. Mm-hmm. But when I tell you how the Bible says do it, that works for all of us. That's right. <laughs> my pastor, you say all bets off. That works for all of us. That's right. Yeah, we can take everything else off the table. Uh, that's essential. Go ahead, Lady Willie. Oh, <laughs> Amen. How many of you all remember the song with the Supreme Saints saying, they said, stop in the name of love before you break my heart. Think mm. it over. Mm. You know, and I, that came to my mind. And, and oftentimes the word of God is telling us to stop, look and listen. Mm. Why? Because you're breaking my heart. If you don't obey me, my if God. you don't do what I tell you to do, then you're breaking my heart. So stop in the name of love before you break my heart. My God. Think it over. In my Jude God. chapter, in Jude 21, if you turn your attention to Jude 21, it tells us to keep yourselves in God's love. My God. It says, Let me get there. Jude 21, it says, keep yourselves in the love of God. Mm-hmm. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Mm-hmm. 
And then in the Message Bible, it says, stay right in the center of God's love. And then if you read it in the Living Bible, it says, stay always within the boundaries where God's love can reach and bless you. God's love wants to reach you and bless you. Mm. And then if you go on to verse 22, it goes on to say in the King James Version, and of some have compassion, mm -hmm. making a difference. Mm. Love is compassion in action. And so he is concerned. If you, if you go to Matthew chapter 18, let's go to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 through 14. Because sometimes we think that, you know, um, that God doesn't care. You know, he's, he's got this word and some consider, consider them as rules and, you know, rigid and hard to, to live by. But God, he wants you to know that he is concerned about you. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about everyone. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 through 14, it says, How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep uh -huh. and one of them be gone astray? Doth he not leave the ninety-nine? And go into the mountains and seek it that which is gone astray. My God. Verse 13. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoice it more over that sheep. The lost one. Than of the ninety-nine which went not astray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even so, it is not the will of your father is which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. God is concerned mm. about everyone. He's mm. not just concerned about the one that considers themselves saved. He's concerned about the unsaved. He's concerned about the unlovable. He's mm. concerned about that one that hates him. Mm. He's concerned about that one that hates you. Mm -hmm. God is concerned God. about every person. Ooh, and it good. is his will that not one of us perish. Mm. That's the reason why God God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe it on. on him would not perish or should not perish, but that we would have everlasting life. That's the reason why he says to abide in his love, stay in his mm. love. That's a safe place. That's a safe zone. That's where the hedge of protection. That's where we're able to be kept. That's where we're mm. able to be maintained. That's where he can drop revelation knowledge on us consistently. This is good. Why? Because we're not resisting him. Mm. Why? Because we're not rejecting him. That's good. But even the one that rejects him, God is concerned for them. God loves them. And somebody needs to know on today, just because you ain't got it all right, does not mean that God is not concerned about you. Just because you. you went astray. God is concerned. God is looking for you. She just read the scripture. God is looking for He's searching for you. The one that went astray, my God. Yes. And the Bible says she just read it. Re he's rejoicing. We, yes. we often say heaven is rejoicing but when one of the sinners come back yes. to the fold. Can I go back to uh, Jude where you was reading yes, that sir, after please. the 22nd verse? Because I want to uh -huh. help you in what you're talking about now. She read 21 and 22, but mm -hmm. 23 says, and others save with fear. He's talking about, this is how mm -hmm. you get those ones that's lost. You save them with fear. Pulling mm -hmm. them out I'm of the fire. fire. Oh, yes. come on, somebody. Come on, we back in Jude now. I'm at the 23rd verse. Mm -hmm. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And what that simply says is that through our living, mm -hmm. through our Christian, we're talking about the secrets to Christian living, through our living, mm -hmm. we need to be showing the love of God that those that are lost, that she just read to you about in Matthew, the 18th chapter, mm -hmm. those that are lost will come running back. Those will come seeking him mm -hmm. that he may rejoice, that we may rejoice mm -hmm. because now they're no longer lost. They're found. They are saved. And how do we, how do we gain them? We pull them out of the fire. Yes. How do you pull them out of the fire? 
You pull them out of the fire by your testimony. You pull them out of the fire by your witness. You pull them out of the fire by your love. Mm -hmm. My God, they saw you. Let me help you again. You know, those that are unlovable, Mm -hmm. because you know it's it's hard to love some people, you know, because some people don't care that you're a Christian. Some people in your family, you've had uh, problems with, uh, Mm -hmm. let's say, you've had conflicts with. If you go back to Matthew, where you were just at Mm -hmm. in the 18th chapter, just slide down to verse 15. Yes, sir. And it says, this is good teaching, y'all. This is good teaching right here, because we're talking about loving and knowing God, loving and knowing. If you get down the the Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 15th verse, it gives you the prescription (laughs) right here in my notes. Mm -hmm. It says, moreover, if a brother or sister trespass, Mm -hmm. what are you talking about, pastor? Uh, uh, get into it with you. <laughs> Let me help you. Let's put it on the street level. Have a problem with you or you have a problem with them. Trespass against you. Go tell him his fault. And look how the Bible tells you to do it. Do it between you and him alone. My God, ain't this good mm-hmm. teaching. Do it between you and her alone. Do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. Go to that brother. Go to that sister alone. And it's and what and when you go to them, let me let me let me get, tell you what what the attitude you gotta have when you go to them. It's gotta go in love. Gotta go Good in God, love. ain't no listen. Go, let me go get them straight. Mm-hmm. Give, let me take my earrings off. Let me take my wife. No, no, you go. You done went the wrong way. Mm-hmm. But go to them in love, and it tells you how to do it. Do it alone. And it says if he or she mm-hmm. shall hear you, guess what? You done gained a brother. You didn't gain the sister. sister. Where yes. you gained them to? Not unto you. You've gained them unto him. That's right. You gained them unto him. Why? Because you've shown the love of mm-hmm. him to them. Yes. But look what it says. But if they will not hear you, and you talking the truth, come mm-hmm. on, somebody, then take with thee three, take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth, here it is, this is what I want you to get. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word, hello, every word, what? Be established. See, this is where we get to the truth at right here. This is where, that's why he said, go get, go get, go get uh, 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 two or three more witnesses. That in e- that every word, what? Will be established. That's if they don't hear. And if he shall neglect to hear them, now, now we didn't brought we didn't brought it and see I tell people in the church if something is private this is how God deals with us he deals with us this way in private, in private. God will never bust you out in public if he ain't dealt mm-hmm. with you first in private this is the reason why he tells you to go to that brother or sister in love mm-hmm. by yourself just mm-hmm. you and them and if you're showing the love of God you've gained a brother you've gained a sister he says but then if they don't want to hear you and you're speaking the truth mm-hmm. go get another brother and sister Mm -hmm. and then approach them again. Then it says, if they shall not, if they neglect to hear all of y'all, tell it unto the church. Mm -hmm. Now we got to go public. Mm. See, we tried to deal with it in private, but now we got to go public. Now we go public. But if he neglects to hear the church, let him or her be unto thee as a heathen man or a publican. What does that mean? You got to let you got to bag off of that. When a person does not want to receive the truth, or like Lady Whitley said earlier, rejects the truth. Mm-hmm. See, everybody don't have to receive the truth, even though mm-hmm. it's free, even though it's a gift. The, the truth of God is a free gift. The truth of salvation yes, is, is a free gift unto all of us. But every one of us will not receive it as God has given it to us. And when you reject God, he said, if you are ashamed of me before man, then I will be ashamed of you before my father. If you reject the truth, if you reject, and what is the truth? The truth is the love. It's the love of God. His word is love. When they reject that, you have to let them go. And the Bible says as a heathen or a publican, somebody that will not be brought under subjection, somebody that will not Mm -hmm. accept the truth. Mm -hmm. This is real good. This is good teaching when we're talking about. And look, this is February the 2nd, y'all. We're in the love month. A lot of people say, no, Mm we're in Black History Month. No, we're also in the love month. month. We're in the love month, and we need to understand that if we love him and know him, then it's going to show, she told us tonight, in our actions. See, the proof is in the fruit. That's right. And the Father, he loves us unconditionally, as I said earlier. So it's not predicated on you and I proving how much we love him, but it's knowing in how much he truly loves us. My God. 
you know, um, understanding how much God loves us, you know, is, and is, requires you and I to respond, you know, when we respond and receive his love, um, trusting and knowing that he cares for us. Yes. You know, whenever we have a concern or whenever we're going through something, it's important to God. Yes, it is. It's important to God. The Bible says that God inclines his ear to hear when we cry out to him mm. or when we call out to him. It's just like when our children get hurt or our children are in distraught or something goes wrong and they are crying out for mama or they're crying out for daddy. Our ear hears them. You know, my husband often tells the story, has told the story that it could be a whole bunch of other children out there. But when your child cries, mm -hmm. you know you're able to distinguish the difference my in God. your child's cry than the cry of someone else. And God knows when his children are crying out for him and calling out for him. And the Bible says that he leans in intently. My God. And he gets closer and closer so that he can hear you and I. So that he can answer our prayers, praise God, and the requests that we've made to him. Then he can honor those things. But he does this what? Because he loves us. He does this because he loves us. But the devil oftentimes wants us to be blinded. He wants to blind our minds and make us feel like... Um, that the Father does not care for us. You know, the things that are going on in the world today, COVID-19, people are saying all these people are dying, but don't God love us? Yes, God loves us. But the Bible lets us know that catastrophes and destructions and death going to happen. Mm. That does not mean that God does not love us. And the enemy will try to convince us many times that God does not love us. But that is a devilish lie from the pits of hell. God... He would never abuse his children. God would never, just like you, he would never harm his children. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, Luke 12 and 32, it says, Fear not, little fox, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So he wants to give us those things that are befitting for us. He wants, he wants us to succeed. He wants to give us his very best. Why? Because he loves us. But when you go, if you also turn your attention, let's go to Matthew 21. And I found this very interesting because, you know, sometimes you'll read the scriptures sometimes. But in Matthew chapter 21, verse 33 through 40, it tells us the story about um, Jesus is telling this story about about the um the farmers, praise God. And what he says here in the scripture here, let me go, 33. He says, hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to, to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servant and beat one and killed another and mm. stoned another. And again, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. My God. Verse 37 says, but last of all, he sent unto them his son, oh saying, they will reverence my son. Mm -hmm. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, yeah. this is the heir. Mm -hmm. Come, Just let kill us him. kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him yes. and cast him out of the vineyard and slew, and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? You know, just letting us know here. What Jesus is saying here in this scripture, he tells us that he tried to reach us 
with his love mm. through his son. He well, got first he finally, sent some servants. He sent servants. First he sent some servants. He sent the pastors. Come he on. sent the preachers. Yeah. He sent the teachers. He sent the evangelists. And the husbandmen was those that he left to care for what he created. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good God of mine. This is and so teacher. the Bible lets us know. But then what happens is that because what he needed done was not accomplished, he finally sent his son. Mm -hmm. See, I got to send my son now. Jesus. Yes, yeah, the problem. Going the on. perfect Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't no Jesus, love down there. The Word of God. I got to send some love down there. Jesus, the sacrifice of mm. His love. My God. And He sent Him, praise God. But what happened is they ignored the gift. That's right, Emily. Hard hearted men. That's what. What that, happens woo. when we ignore God's gift? Mm. When we ignore Reject God's it. gift. His son, Jesus mm. Christ, guess what? We reject God. That's right. When you reject the son, you reject God. Yes, when you refuse to love God, Jesus, you refuse to love God. Mm -hmm. When you refuse to come into a love relationship with Jesus, you reject your relationship with God. He says no other way except by me. That's it. That's it. And so there is a difference, praise God, when we're talking about love and demonstrating love. Wow. And God demonstrated love. Love means action. And it's easy to love those, as Pastor said, who love you and people who, tr who you trust than for you to be able to love those that are unlovable, those that are unreasonable, those that seek and do you harm. Those that don't see everything the way you see. That's right. But nevertheless, God sent his son. Because he loved us, even the unlovable. And God loves even those who hate him. God loves even those who love him. And guess what? We are to do the same. We are to love the person but hate the sin. We are to love the person but hate the sin. And so we are called to obey the word of God. We are called to obey him. We are, why? Because you love. if you love God, you're going to obey God. Mm. If you love God, you're going to the obey God. The proof is God. in the fruit. That's right. John 14 and 21, the Message Bible says this. It says, the person who knows my commandments, the person mm -hmm. who loves me, the person who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. Mm -hmm. And the person who loves me will be loved by my Father. Father. And I will love him and make myself plain to him. Mm -hmm. So how many of you know that the secret today um, of obeying is loving? Because as we read earlier in John 15, 9 and 10, it says if you keep his commandments, then you're going to abide in his love. And even as, you, as he has kept his father's commandments, and he has also abided in his father's love. Mm. Another version says, as the father hath loved me, so as I loved you. Continue ye in my love. My if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's Ooh. commandments and abided in his love. And the Living Bible my says God. it this way. It says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Live within my love. When you obey me, you are living in my love, just as I obey my Father and live in his love. Not this not. is John 15, 9 verses, um, John chapter 15, verses 9 through 10. And verse 10 connects obedience with love. Mm. It connects obedience with love. When you obey me, he says, you are living in my love. Compassion in action. Compassion in action. Love is compassion in action. When you, when you when you obey me, that's the reason why the other Sunday we taught you that uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. Or last Tuesday, excuse me. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, a lot of people want to go through the routines that you talked about mm -hmm. earlier and consider those things being obedient. Mm -hmm. And he says you have to eat the whole scroll. You know, I hear people in church use this cliche. Mm -hmm. I love you and there's nothing you can, you can do, do about, about it. it. They say, I love you. And I, I like it. You know, I've used it. You know, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. What they're essentially saying is, I love you 
and I won't allow you to change it. That's right. Oh, that's what they're essentially saying. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. I love you and I won't allow you to change it. I won't allow nothing to change it and not even you. Uh, we have that <laughs> we have that God kind of love. See, when you got that God kind of love, it's called agape. Yes. It's a different kind of love. Uh, we have a love uh, that when you have God's kind of love, it's agape, and you can love everybody, that's even your right. enemies. That's that's agape love mm-hmm. when you can love everybody. Uh, the proof the proof is in the pr- in the fruit. I keep saying that because the Bible says love your enemies and bless them that persecute you. Well, when you got agape love, you can love like that. The truth is, many of us in church and in this world, many Christians don't have agape love. What we have is called philo love or storgy love or, mm-hmm. or, or eros, eros love. love. We have those kind of loves uh, and the Bible describes them to us. We don't have agape love. We have uh, storgy love, the kind of love that we have for our family members. Mm-hmm. Eros love, the kind of love that we have for our wives and our husbands mm-hmm. and our mates. We mm-hmm. have those kind of loves there. We don't have the agape love that God is calling for. Mm-hmm. This is the reason why we teach that you must grow in grace. You mm-hmm. must grow you, before you go because if you don't leave out with that That's kind it. of love, the agape love, those other loves, as good as they may be, they do not get us to where God wants us to be in him. Mm-hmm. And that is where he wants us to be is agape. He wants all of us to have that kind of love. He told the disciples in John thirteen thirty five. Mm-hmm. he says, by this, all men will know. That you are my disciples. Not because you got a badge on. Not because you got a title on. Not because you running around saying mm-hmm. that you this or you that. He said, how will they know it? He said, that you have love one for another. Mm-hmm. He said, that's how they're going to know you're a part of me. He said, that's how they would know that you're a part of me. Our love will locate us, y'all. Our love will locate us. You can say what you want to say with your mouth. She read the scripture tonight that Jesus said, these people draw nigh unto me with their mouths. But their hearts are far away from me. Mm-hmm. Why? Because their love located them. It will identify who we really are. That's right. When we say that, when we say with our mouths that we love God, but our actions show that we don't, the Bible says we're a liar. That's and right. And the only way that we can combat hate is with love. Mm-hmm. And right now, today, brothers and sisters, our time is almost up. We're living in a world today that hate has shown its evil face. Hate is sprouting up everywhere mm-hmm. now. Not that it was ever dead. Not that it was ever buried. It, 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 it lied dormant on many of our jobs. You know, you don't know who what they think about you. You got a, a way that you think about them and this and that and out in the world and in society. But hate now has sprouted up now. It's evil is showing. The Bible says it like this. Hell has enlarged itself. itself. And it's come up to meet us. Yeah. Our greatest defense against mm-hmm. hate is love. That's right. I know it sounds crazy, but God's love will never make sense to the world. God's love will never make sense to the world. Why? Because he says, he said, you got to love them that hate you. And mm-hmm. we find that very, that's, that's a hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. They hate me. Mm-hmm. They don't like me. They talk about me. And God, you saying love them? This don't, this don't, it don't, it's not rational. God's love will never make sense to man. Martin Luther King said it like this. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. My God. Only mm-hmm. light can do that. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. He mm-hmm. said only light can do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Hate cannot drive mm-hmm. out hate. That's right. Only love can do that. That's right. Only love can do that. And I want to, I want to say something about Dr. King. You know, this is Black History Month. We're also in the love month. Dr. King showed his intelligence because i tell you this in our church all the time you really want to show how smart you are say what god says if you read all of dr king's quotes and many people uh last month quoted a lot of things that dr king said but when you when you read those quotes reference your bible Mm -hmm. because many of those quotes from dr king come from your bible from the word of god (laughs) yeah and when you really want to be smart when you really want to be intelligent you say what god says and he says darkness can't drive out darkness Mm -hmm. hatred can't drive out hatred only love can drive out hatred and only light can drive out darkness and this is where we have to be as children of god as christians in the body of christ we have to show the love of god 
People come to the church. Some people come to the church. Straight running game. <laughs> and that's probably why God took me through the streets first before he brought me to the church. That's how he did Paul. Paul persecuted the church before God said, no, now you finna work for me. And he took me through the streets so I could recognize people come to the church running game. I said, boy, I, hey, Doc, I've been there before. <laughs> but it does not stop me from showing the love of God. See, everybody has a background. Everybody has a way that God brought them to him. And the way that he did it, no matter where you came from, no matter how, what, what road you took to get to him, he said it was through love and kindness I, I drew you. That's how I got you. I got you through love and kindness. All right, because when you kept going wrong, when you kept denying him, when you kept rejecting him, he kept loving you. Yes. Woo! When you kept hating on yes. him, he kept loving on you. My God. Yes. <laughs> when you kept saying no, he kept saying yes. Good God Almighty. He kept loving you. And if we, we have to grow to that level as Christians. We're talking about the secrets to Christian living. The secret to Christian living tonight is knowing and loving God. Amen. That's the secret tonight. <laughs> I can't just say I know him. I got to love the way God loves. Unconditionally. My God. God is love. Yes. Then it says God is our strong tower. Yes. <laughs> and the righteous run in there and they safe. You better, you better hear that scripture. Everybody trying to run up in there. No. And the righteous run in and they are safe. God is love. God is love. And God is our strong tower. God is our fortress. God is our protection. And this, even in these times that we're living in now, you Thank need you, to Jesus. run into God. <laughs> Thank you. You need to run into God. You need to run into his love. My yes. God. You need to run to the avenue where grace and mercy have met together. <laughs> Righteousness and peace have kissed one another. That's where we need to meet at. Because that's where God is. And that's where his love is. He wants to protect us. When the righteous run in there, we're safe. We're secure. We're covered. We're protected. That's right. Protected in what? His love. In his love. In his love. You know, Isaiah 49 and 16 in the Amplified Version of the Bible, it tells us that God's love is of such magnitude. Mm. He has said of us, he says, behold, I have indelibly imprinted mm. or tattooed a picture of you in the palm Ooh. of each of my hands. My God. Imagine there's a picture of you mm. tattooed in the palms of each of my God's God. hands. He says, your walls are continually before me. Mm. You're ever present before me. Jesus loves us enough, people, to yeah. leave heaven, mm. to come down to earth. My God. He came and he became flesh. He became the son of man. Yes. So that we could become sons of God. Mm. My God. He came and became flesh. Yes. Went through all of the things that you and I go through, experience the Hallelujah. things that you and I experience and go through. Yes. Became the son of man so that you and I could become sons of of God. My God. And it's not enough that he did that. But when he left, he didn't leave us and forsake us. My God. He didn't leave us comfortless. He left the Holy Spirit mm. Mm. to be there with us, to continue to instruct and to lead and to guide us into all truth. Thank you, Lord. So that you and I would be able to continue our journey and walk in the love of God mm. to continue to experience the love of God through the instruction of the word of God because the Holy Spirit is telling us everything that he hears from the Father. Amen. Everything that he hears from the Father. John chapter 14 verse 5 through 6 it says this Thomas said to him Lord we do not know where you are going so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the only way. My God. And the real truth. Mm -hmm. And the real life. Yes. No one comes to the Father but through me. Glory. So on tonight, somebody needs to know that Jesus is the way. Jesus is our path. Jesus is the truth. Yes, he is. Jesus is the reality of all of God's promises in his word to us. And Jesus is the life. 
He is the divine life joined with ours. His divine life mm. is joined with your life and my life so that we could live now and for all eternity. Amen. Praise God. I pray that we have said something in this word on tonight. We're talking about loving and knowing God. There's so much, so much that we could have shared. But, you know, in this space that we, you know, we can get in what we can get in in this space. But on tonight, we're going to pray. Praise God. And we ask right now, Father God, that you, Lord God, we thank you for your unconditional love, Father. We thank you for your unfailing love, Father God, toward us. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you Thank sent you, Jesus to die once and for all for us. That we might have an opportunity to love like you. Mm. That we might have an opportunity to know you, Lord yes. God, and to live again. Thank you, Lord, for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Speak, Lord. Thank you for the voice of your word on tonight, God. Let us clearly hear you, Lord God, that we may obey your commandments, that we may obey your word, God, that we may stay connected to you, O oh God, that we may stay connected through the vine, God, that we may abide in you and yes. you as you abide in us. Thank you. When Lord. we do, God, that we mm. will witness the blossoming, Father God, and the blooming, Lord God, of Hallelujah. the fruit of your spirit, Lord God, in our lives like never before. Father, we thank you, oh God. We ask that you would manifest in our lives, Lord God, and that we will know, oh God, and that we will show your love, God, everywhere that we go. Lord, we pray for those that are not saved, oh God, that yes. they will come to love you, oh God, that they will have a heart and a desire to know you better, Lord God. God, we ask right now that they would submit themselves to you, oh God, that they will give themselves as you gave your darling son, Jesus. For that son or that daughter that needs to return, all they've got to do is turn back from their sinful ways and reconnect and abide in you, Lord God, and to accept your love once again and to live and to love like you. And God, for those that need the Holy Spirit, that they will accept even your spirit that you've lovingly given to us to keep us until we see you again in heaven. Father, we thank you and we praise you, O oh God. And we ask that you bless, O oh God, the ears of the hearer and let them not only be hearers, but let them be doers even tonight of your word. Yes. And that is that they learn to love you and they come to know you. In a very real way. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 God bless each and every yes. one of you that have joined us tonight. We thank God for your attentiveness yes. to the word of God. We yes. pray that this word has met you right where you are. Yes. And that you have a better understanding of the love of God. And that yes. you know him. Because he knows us. Amen. Join us back here on Sunday at 12 noon. Amen. God bless you. May God the Lord keep you. you.